Hey everybody, it's Dan. Welcome to Weld Fever. On today's episode, we're going to do something that's very popular on this channel, and that's welding square tubing. However, to uh, keep in line with what we've been doing lately, we're going to actually TIG weld square tubing. And I'm going to explain to you why you would want to TIG weld square tubing instead of using other processes. So sit back and relax, and uh, here we go. Okay, so TIG welding square tubing. Why would you do it, right? Well, probably the biggest reason to TIG weld square tubing as opposed to MIG or stick welding it would be because the material is actually very thin. Or if it's some kind of a specialized material that either stick or MIG welding uh, won't be uh, as effective. That's another reason. But usually more than not, it's going to be maybe some kind of decorative square tubing that has a very, very thin wall. And so in order to control the heat so you don't blow through it, if you happen to have a TIG welder, that would be an ideal uh, situation to use it in. So here I have two pieces of square tubing. Now, the thickness on this is actually fairly thick. Um, we're going to TIG weld this just for example purposes, but I'll tell you right now that this could easily be MIG welded and stick welded as well. Uh, but for the sake of the example, try to imagine that this is a thin wall tubing that we're trying not to blow through. I just don't happen to have any around today, but we're going to go ahead and do the typical joint where we join two pieces of square tubing like so, and we'll take it all around and uh, see how successful we are. All right, so before we begin, let me explain what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and weld this all the way around and in order to get this started we need to tack it in place. Now you'll notice that I have cleaned this all out to clean shiny metal. If you saw last week's video you'll remember that I discussed that in order to TIG weld stuff you have to clean your metal well. So we went ahead and we cut this on the bandsaw. These are some scrap pieces and the bandsaw has a lubricant that we use so we went ahead and took some acetone and cleaned it all off, cleaned all the lubricating oil off of it and we also went ahead and used a flap disc to uh, clean off all the mill scale and any other contaminants on there to get clean shiny metal. So that's number one. Number two, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a fusion tack right here, which means basically I'm going to use the heat of the TIG torch. I'm not going to use any of this filler wire just to get a tack right here in the corner. And after that one's done, I'm going to flip it around and tack it on the other corner and then continue until I get all four corners tacked up. I'm also going to put pressure downward on the piece so that it doesn't flip up on me because uh, what usually happens when you apply heat is it wants to pull towards itself which will raise the other side so I'm going to keep that pushed down nice and firm that way that hopefully that doesn't happen and keep in mind though this is just a practice piece so I'm not overly concerned about it but if you're doing something that counts you might want to consider clamping it that way it doesn't lift on you. Okay let's go ahead and put tack on this. Okay, there's one. We'll do the opposite corner. Okay, and I just go until it puddles, and then I, as soon as it puddles, I go ahead and I stop. I got a nice fusion tack. Now we'll do this corner. go. That one is puddled together. Also keep in mind my settings on this. I'm using a 332nd tungsten and I'm also using uh, 125 amps. Now this is thicker material than you would probably do using TIG welding so that's why my amperage is so high. But remember you have to adjust your amperage according to your thickness. So in this instance we're using 125 amps so this is about an eighth of an inch thick. Last tack. Okay, so there you have it. You got all four corners that are tacked in. If you can see them there, and now we're uh, ready to go ahead and apply the uh, finished welds with filler material. Okay, so uh, since we have uh, our piece tacked in four corners, at this point we really don't have to worry too much about uh, you know which side to start on first because everything should hold down well. 
Uh, in this instance, I'm going to actually uh, incorporate some filler metal, and I'm going to use a 1 uh filler metal for this. That's an ER70S2 filler metal for steel, for mild steel. And uh, here we go. Not a lot to say here, just a regular pattern of heating it up, making sure that your fuse and you've got a puddle going, and then dab and move, dab and move, dab and move, dab and move. It's a very consistent, uh, nice rhythmic pattern. you got to try to make the motions all go in some type of a rhythm. I suggest counting it out to get that rhythm at first, especially if you're not used to it. That always seems to help, and then you'll have evenly spaced ripples and a nice looking weld. Okay, you'll notice that's a nice little uh, fillet all the way across, well filled in, and hopefully you can see from the shot, I'll go ahead and twist it up a little bit, it's very well filled in, and it seems to be flat and flush across, uh, and everything looks good on that, so we're happy on that one, on to the next one. Okay, so the next one is basically the equivalent of a T-joint, uh, so we're going to go ahead and weld this one up, now I have the, the uh, uh, flexible head here which is a really a great thing when it comes to trying to manipulate into these things uh, they're not a lot more expensive than your regular head and I highly recommend them anyway uh, let's go ahead and uh, apply what uh, basically comes down to a t-joint here for our next one Okay, once again, I'm happy with that result. As you can see there, we've got a nice uh, nice joint that's uh, got good penetration and also has a good appearance all the way across. No undercut, so that's a good one. Let's just quickly move on to the next one while we're at it. Okay, hopefully you can see that joint there. Let's go ahead and weld this one over. This is going to be like before. It's basically like a butt joint. And uh, because we have this uh, little bit of a rounded edge here, it's more like a flare bevel joint. Um, anyhow, let's go ahead and do this. Okay, once again, a really good uh, turnout here. We have a satisfactory weld. And last but not least, I'll go ahead and do the last uh, key joint here. Set this up a little bit. Now you're going to notice I have my tungsten sticking out quite a bit this time because it's easier to get into a, a corner joint or a T-joint when you have a tungsten that's sticking out. I have a lot of uh, gas coverage right now. I have about 20, uh, 20 to 25 cubic feet per hour and I have a very big cup so I should be okay with my shielding gas coverage. Anyway, let's go ahead and try this out. Okay, and that one was good too. We're happy with that. And so ends another installment of Weld Fever. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. I know I did. Hey, don't forget to check us out every Wednesday, Weld Fever Wednesday on YouTube. Don't forget to visit the website, www.weldfever.com for gear and to check out our forum. And also we're on Instagram, hashtag Weld Fever. Catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.